Well, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the farm. So we are back in the wood shop this morning. Taylor is giving me a hand. We've got a little project going. We are putting together some boxes, uh, some insulated boxes for our outdoor cats, for our barn cats. Um, we have been having a whole lot of coyote pressure here lately, which isn't super out of the ordinary, but we have kind of been hearing them a lot more as of late. And I think a symptom of that is the cats are hanging out on the front porch a whole lot more than they normally do, uh, especially at nighttime. Uh, that's also, that seems to be a winter thing. Uh, in the past, I have just put out some, you know, to be honest, pretty crummy looking, just slapped together pieces of plywood and th tossed a couple of blankets in them. And they curl up in those in the winter time. But Taylor had the idea, you know, it's a, it's a crappy rainy day. Why don't we just go ahead back to the wood shop and let's put together something that looks halfway decent to put out on the porch so they have somewhere warm to hang out, you know, now that the, the weather is starting to change over to cold. I do not really have a plan that I'm going to be working off of. I kind of have some ideas in my head of sort of what I want it to end up looking like. I know what the size of the space I need it to fit in is. It has to fit in between. There's an outlet on the wall and the hose spigot, so I only have three feet of space to fit it in between. So I kind of know what some of my constraints are. Uh, I also am not very good at drawing, so I don't have... I could show you what I drew, but I don't think it would make much sense either. But if you saw the thumbnail and you clicked on this video, you probably already know what it looks like at the end. So gonna kind of just let you guys follow along and kind of talk you through my thought process as I'm going through building it, as we are going through building it and uh, cobbling together some of our ideas. Well, one thing you probably will notice as we're doing this is there's gonna be some weird lumber dimensions because I'm trying to get this all done with just scrap stuff. So, so far, all we've done is we built this platform. This is gonna be the base that the first level is gonna sit on. So basically we just have some two by threes screwed together from the ends to create the framework that we screwed a piece of three eighths inch plywood to. Right now we just are sitting at two by three, two foot by three foot. These are just some um, treated two by six scraps that we had left over. We just built a fence. Um, if you go back and you look at probably it's the video before this one, we got a dog, a little brisky, a little brisket, and uh, we built a fence for him out in the backyard. These were some of the two by six scraps that were left. Just cut them down to all the same length. I'm going to countersink a couple of holes because my screws are too short that I'm going to use. I'm going to countersink a couple holes to cheat and make those screws a little bit longer. And screw these legs on to get it up off the ground. It's going to be sitting on concrete. We don't want all that, you know, all the cold mass of the concrete to just be wicking its way right up into the, the structure. So we're just building it up off the ground a little bit. So what I was just saying, you know, I have these two inch screws. This is inch and a half material, so not a lot was going to get through. So by countersinking, you know, in about uh, probably between a quarter and like three eighths of an inch, I'm effectively making that screw a quarter to three eighths of an inch. You know, maybe even like three eighths to a half an inch longer going through, getting into the meat of the material behind it. So that's what I meant by I was kind of making the screws longer. So now before we go any further and start getting some walls and stuff built on here, we are gonna go ahead and get this base painted. We're just using some Kills um, interior, exterior. So we're just gonna paint it white, get it sealed up. You won't really end up seeing most of it, but. As the paint is drying, I came over here. I've got all these two by twos, and this is what I'm gonna do the framing with. Uh, you can see I have everything labeled. I've got a bunch of 15 inch studs some 30 inch ones, and then I got those all marked with S. Then I got some stuffed peas, those are gonna be the plates. But I got everything labeled, so once I cut it, I'll have a much harder time confusing myself because I haven't written anything down, I don't have a picture, I don't have a print that I'm working off of, so just kinda of trying to keep it uh, as it's coming out of my head, making sure I stay on the same page with myself.
I got all of my studs and my plates cut up, so I'll probably just set up the camera again for another quick little time lapse. I'm just going to nail and screw everything together and kind of frame up the little first floor level. And then we'll set it over here on the platform and see how it looks. Okay, so I attached the box, the little framing. Um, there's some screws going down, holding some of the studs in to the plates. And then I just used some two inch brad nails to nail it to the box. Now I've got that measurement. I'm gonna come out here and what we're gonna use for the siding. So we've got some of this T11. So I've got my measurements and I'm gonna run this vertically so it uh, kind of mimics the, uh, the look of siding, because it's gonna go up by the house, kind of against the house. So we're gonna try to kind of mimic with the uh, horizontal lines, the look of the siding. So I'm gonna go ahead and rip a few pieces of this down and probably then paint it after that before we go ahead and attach it to the cat house, because I think it'll be easier to paint uh, flat, especially with the grooves that are in the T11 that are routed into the T11. It'll be uh, a lot easier to paint flat and not get runs and globs and stuff. So that's the next step. So to wrap it up here for the evening, I got all of my siding uh, side panels cut and then that piece of plywood right there, that is the floor for the second floor. So I am just gonna go paint crazy. I'm gonna try to get all of this stuff painted this evening and then we'll call it for the night and jump back on this, I don't know, tomorrow or Tuesday. So uh, guess what, another time lapse. I've got all my side panel pieces painted. Got my other little piece painted for the second floor. Now what I'm doing is I've got some scrap pieces of uh, insulation foam. We're kind of up in the rafters up in the barn. I'm gonna cut those down for inside of the walls here on the first floor, just to kind of make it a little bit more weather tight. You know, I don't know how much warmth the cats will actually be putting off. At the very least, it should cut down on some of the draft to help it feel warmer. So I used that duct, duct tape, the silver duct tape, to attach my, um, my foam panels, my insulation panels. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I have my front piece of siding here. On the back side, I have drawn out the hole I'm going to cut out for the door. So that's going to go here in this opening and then I will piece in a couple of pieces of insulation around it. Then I can tack up this side piece and the front piece and then figure out, I think I got a carpet square or something somewhere, I can cut down for the inside. And then we'll put on the second floor.
Got these siding pieces, siding pieces nailed on. Got the uh, carpet square set there on top. I nailed this on, I got a little ahead of myself. Got the next, uh, the second platform nailed on. Gonna go, I got a few more uh, little two by twos I need to cut for my studs and stuff for the second floor. So I'm gonna go do that and then we'll slap that together real quick and we'll be ready to do some trim and put the roof on. Hope you noticed when I was shooting those finish nails, I was making sure my hand was clear way away from it. Because they like to follow the grain of the wood. Excuse me. They like to follow the grain of the wood and they'll shoot right out the side. So make sure your hand is plenty clear. So I'm just going to nip those off. I won't have you sit through it again, but all I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and cut some styrofoam inserts for inside of here, cut down the carpet square, uh, and just do everything that I did on the floor below. Um, and we'll catch up you guys with you guys when I finish. So I did just realize I forgot to do something. I forgot to cut the hole in this so they'll be able to get from the first floor into the second floor before I nailed everything in. So I'm going to have to use the, uh, the multi-tool here like I used to cut the door in at the bottom. I had to use the multi-tool and I'll probably try to set the vacuum up, try to suck up most of the sawdust because I've already got the carpet in in the bottom. Try not to make too much of a mess. Got ahead of myself. Okay, so it's been a couple of days. I've spent a few minutes on this each day but not really accomplished anything huge. I do have the siding pieces nailed to it now, the T11 all nailed to it. I've got the carpet in the bottom and the carpet in the top and you can see I did get that hole cut with the multi-tool and then what I'm working on now is coming up with how I'm going to attach the piece of sheet metal roofing to the top so I had these scrap pieces of 2x3 left I figured that was it's not really gonna need much pitch if any at all um, since it's a metal roof you know it could basically be any pitch is enough pitch. So I ripped that two by three in half diagonally over the length right here. Got that in front. This is the piece of sheet metal roofing I'm gonna use. This actually, this piece of, it's not quite black. Maybe it's more of like a charcoal. Actually came in the bundle of roofing and siding that this building was made out of. So. There was just one random piece of like charcoal in with all the red that this building was made out of. So, not that it was really a freebie because it got paid for, but it was a spare because we didn't need it. So I'm just going to use some of those grommeted roofing screws, I'll show you those here in a second, to attach this to the top. Right now I'm just trying to decide whether or not I need some sort of something to go across the span here, just to give it a little support in the middle. Well, I just pulled the classic, thought I was recording, but I wasn't. But I did just use the electric shear to cut this uh, roof panel down to size. I used the big old T-square, shot a straight line down it, and then I was able to just shimmy the electric shears across it, and was able to just get it square and take off the little bit um, the little bit of extra that was there and it gives it a nice you know it doesn't really leave burrs so it kind of gives it a nice edge that will be the back side so shouldn't really have to worry about catching on it or anything but it just it looks a little better than like trying to saw cut it I did decide to go ahead and I ran a little two by two across this direction just to give it a little bit more support and give myself one more place to be able to shoot a screw or two to make sure it stays affixed to the top there. So we're gonna go ahead and I am gonna go ahead and screw the roof on. I have these, these are one and a half inch 
actual roof screws. You see they have the, for their four metal roofing. They have that little rubber grommet on there. And so when it sucks down, you know, it makes the hole obviously going in there. And that rubber grommet creates the seal over top of the hole to make sure it doesn't leak. So all I'm going to do is I'm about where I want to be. I'm going to start in the back here. I'm going to shoot a screw and then I'll use a tape measure off the front to make sure that everything is square off the front. But this screw here in the back is what will be my pivot point to be able to get everything square. So as long as I'm close with this first one, I should be fine for everywhere else. Okay, got the roof attached. Fastened down with some of those screws. <laughs> got the dog crew. We're dog sitting this weekend, Reese and Noel. So uh, all that's left to do, I went ahead and I have cut the first few, is we're gonna cut down some of these, um, I don't know what you'd call it. It's some kind of MDF, some kind of manufactured board. It's textured to look like wood. I got a couple pieces of it left, actually, from when we did the chicken coop build. The chicken coop build, way over there. Actually, from when we did the uh, water collection house down on the end, there's a video. I'll leave a link for it right here. I'll leave a little tag. So yeah, that was left over from there. So another thing, while, while it wasn't free, quote unquote, it was something that was here on hand. And uh, if you have the storage, never throw anything away. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut all these little trim pieces and they're gonna get painted. And we'll catch you guys here at the end. I'm gonna paint these before I shoot them up with nails. I am labeling where they go because you know this side will that side will get paint so you'll never see that but I'm gonna be cutting a whole bunch of them and painting them all at once before I attach them so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure they're labeled so I don't lose track so I figured there was enough video of me nailing up trim and stuff so I do have a couple, the last couple of pieces, uh, they were kind of a couple of oddball pieces I didn't consider that just got painted. That's gonna be what covers up the two by threes that hold the roof up. But the last thing I'm gonna do is I've got this piece of J channel. Yes, I realize that it's red. Um, and it was up in the rafters. I thought it was a whole piece, so plans are gonna change a little bit. But I am gonna cut this piece of J channel to at least protect these front corners well, not protect the corners, protect us from the corners. So I'm gonna cut those real quick and wrap them around. And then I have a can of Rust-Oleum that pretty close to matches that I'm gonna spray the red with. And then we'll be done. These cuts are actually really easy to do. I've got, or the bends are actually really easy to do. You can just do it with a cut. I got my line marked. I'm just gonna cut through on both sides all the way up to the channel. Snip, snip. And then, should just fold and you can get your 90 degree corner. Well, got the last couple of things attached. Got that J channel painted. It matches pretty well, actually. And I don't honestly, I don't hate that it doesn't come all the way back. It is gonna protect the those pointy front corners, which is, you know, you're not gonna run into it up against the house there. So, and then we already got Mr. Pablo <laughs> up here investigating. So, Hopefully here in a little bit, we'll get a little a little video of the guys hanging out inside. Well guys, we hope you enjoyed that video. We really like to spoil our animals around here. I know that was a little bit overkill um, just for a little cat box. But uh, yeah, we really like to spoil our guys around here. I am fortunate enough, you know, all the projects that we've done over the last couple of years, I have the space and availability to just save all of my scrap from all that stuff. So. 
I was able to put that together. Well, not for free, because of course everything was paid for at some point with all stuff that we just had here at the farm. So if you guys did enjoy that video, think about hitting that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until next time, y'all, we will see you.